Hello everyone and welcome back to the Human Echoes recap for the season finale of season three of Z Nation. This one's called Everybody Dies in the End. And that's a lie. There's just at least a few people left alive. There's, there's at least two or three, at least, probably more, probably a lot more. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. I, this is not my favorite season finale of Z nation. That's the everything. I think all of my favorite things are in season one, honestly, uh, which is not to say that the show has gone downhill exactly, but I, it's like th that stupid missile ending was just so gut punch, like incredible. I was not expecting that in season one. But this is a pretty fine season finale. And I think the the strength of this episode is that it's a really good episode of Z Nation. In addition to being a season finale, it's got a lot of really good stuff. And it's paying off and culminating a lot of things that we've seen throughout the season. And now it's finally all coming together. And that's what I liked best about this season. We find, we see Addie and Doc in a different car, still chasing after the man and Lucy. And they kind of have a throwaway line. Obviously, you know, they, they keep switching cars, they, which I, I like that that's a through line in Z Nation. Just the idea that the car is almost not even worth repairing or filling up with gas or anything. You just pick another one and go because you know, it's the apocalypse and they're littered all over the place, uh, which gets them away from having to have some kind of hero vehicle that we're going to have to keep seeing over and over again as well from the production end of things. But they're chasing after Addie and the man, Addie and the man, Lucy and the man. The man is with Lucy and we see that she is now essentially an adult, a young adult, but I would, I would wager that the actress playing her at this point is at least 18. Uh, which is where the, I, I think they wanted to get because tutoring costs and all that stuff, not a great expense to have on a relatively low budget show like this. Uh, so we, we, we have an older Lucy and the man is telling her, listen, Addie's not coming for you. Nobody's coming for you. It's just you and me. We're going to Zona. You're going to have to deal with that. And we cut back to Addie and Doc pulling up on a hitchhiker, the zombie grandpa hitchhiker, who I think is my favorite character of this episode, despite the fact that he only said one word the whole time was so adorable and great. They, they pick this guy up. They, well, they don't pick him up at first. I mean, they just roll up to him. He's got his thumb out. He's clearly a zombie and he's just saying, Lucy. Lucy sticking this guy in the back seat, putting those ridiculous holographic sunglasses on him. He's just saying, Lucy, Lucy, Lucy over and over again, pointing the way for them, which I read a lot of you complaining in the Reddit thread last week. Well, why didn't doc take the arm along with him? Uh, legitimate criticism, but th they did actually think of that at least here. Uh, so they're, they, there is some iteration of that happening in this and this zombie guy riding along with them is just so adorable. It it's, it's interesting because Lucy still doesn't like, she can't free these people from their, uh, their prison. Exactly. She can't give them, at least not yet. She can't give them back their ability to completely emote and to completely have their consciousness take over their body, but she can rewrite enough of their wiring to stop them from being a constant eating machine, which is incredible and very interesting from where I'm sitting going forward, assuming that she doesn't die as well. I'll talk about that. <laughs> But assuming she doesn't die, we like that that introduces a whole different dynamic. And maybe going forward, she can unlock some of these people's original personalities in their zombie bodies. 
Yeah, it gets, I get so excited. Uh, we we also see that uh, Warren and Sun May are trying to contact Camp Northern Light. We've got Kaya in the sky sending through some tablet hookup or something that we won't really try to question how exactly it got going. It's TV magic and stuff. Uh, she gives them the coordinates for where they need to be, where the man and Lucy are heading. And around this time, we also find out that 10 K is not doing good. Uh, his bite mark where Murphy bit him. Well, no, it's not his bite mark where Murphy bit him. Something in his, a bite mark in his arm or one of the injection sites in his arm has become infected. He's got all these conflicting vaccine things that are also just like churning through his system. He's got a lot of stuff messing him up at the moment and it's not looking good for him. There's, I, I thought a really interesting scene between Murphy and Warren where Murphy says to Warren, Hey, this is why you're here. You have to make the tough choices. And I, I, I honestly, I'm going to, I'm going to give Warren most of a pass on this one because I don't think, I mean, if they did stop, what would they do for 10 K anyway? I mean, we know what's going to happen later in the episode, but even if he did die in the back of that truck, it's not like, Oh, well there's a hospital, right? Just three miles across the way. If we went there, it would be fine. So her making the tough choice here and saying, listen, hopefully 10 K pulls through. We're going to keep moving though. I think was the right one because you know, he's just going to lay in the back of the truck or he's going to lay on the side of the road or somewhere really bad to be super sick. Like he is anyway. And at, why sacrifice the mission for zero gain in the interim? And this is only a little side note, but I do think it's going to turn into more going forward. I hope it turns into more going forward. Kaya is looking for citizen Z who has headed back North or at least tried to head back north to be with her and the baby growing in her belly that he put there. Way to go, Citizen Z. Not able to get in contact with him or Grandpa Eskimo guy. Uh, sorry, I forgot his name. Maybe maybe that's when I'll learn next season, you guys. I've got Sun May down, though. I did. I learned Sun May, okay? You have to give me credit for that. I'll get the Inuit guy who's awesome. I, I love the... Uh, believe me, I love the character. Just to let the name slip my mind at the moment. I know someone will let me know in the comments what his name is, but I think that there is a great potential for him and citizen Z to have some sort of ancillary adventures that aren't just tied into camp Northern light. Uh, if they have crashed or, you know, had to crash land the plane on their way back to camp Northern light. And that could be some interesting stuff because I'd like to see citizen Z do more than just, sit in the chair and talk in the microphone. I mean, I've got nothing against sitting in a chair and talking in a microphone, but you know what I'm saying? Like from a TV standpoint, you've got DJ Qualis, Qualls, Qual, Qual, you, you've got Citizen Z in your show uh, and he's a cool guy and it's, let's shake it up and see Z Nation is definitely not the kind of show that wants to, to keep everything the same, which is one of my main things that I love about it is that it's never afraid to change. It's never afraid to grow and to, to show these people evolving. And we're seeing all that happen here. Uh, Doc and Addie finally get to where the man has taken Lucy. Why have I, you'll notice that I'm pausing before I say Lucy, because for some reason I want to say Addie instead of Lucy. It's because I'm dumb. Uh, so <laughs> they get to where the man has, has taken Lucy and the way is shut. They cannot come in. And Addie says, all right, I'm climbing. I'm going to the top of this baby. We're going up the rock to the fortress that's up, up top here. Apparently this mountain is just riddled with not caves exactly, but it, it's a fort that's just built all into this giant mountain side. And she decides to climb the sheer cliff face of this mountain to get to the top to find a way in. At, in the interim, we've also seen the man and Lucy go in, find some of the base has been overrun with zombies that are not able to be controlled by Lucy. Why are they not able to be controlled by Lucy? Because they had the Zona vaccine. 
I don't know if it was a vaccine exactly, but they had the immunity uh, injection that they had gotten and it's starting to fail them. And I don't know if I, I, this wasn't a hundred percent clear to me if the injection failed and they just instantly turned into zombies when the injection fails or if the injection fails and then if they die or get bit or whatever, they turn into zombies. That was a little bit unclear, but the, the base is not the stronghold. The man is clearly expecting that it is. We kind of have a great apocalypse now callback where he says, you know, who's in charge here. And the guy's like, I thought you were in charge. Uh, and by the way, if you're the man, the man, I'm just going to give you a word of advice. You're in charge everywhere you go. You just walk into a place. You're in charge. Stop asking who's in charge. Unless you're talking to your like main zone, guy, clearly you need to be hanging on to the, the reins of this situation. <sighs> but there is a, a, a fascinating evolution happening here with the man and Lucy, because as we go forward, we start to see that a, there's a little bit of a Stockholm syndrome going on, uh, which Lucy wouldn't know even what that was. Cause she's like a year old at this point. I, I don't think she's been around anybody to tell her about Stockholm syndrome, but also she's, she's had an impact on him. And it's uh, on one level. I think you could argue that it's kind of squicky because he knew her when she was like six and 10 and 16. And that was all like last week. And now she's an adult, but like he, she has broken down his stony exterior to the point where he, I think legitimately, there was a a moment of doubt in my mind where I thought maybe he's manipulating her here. You know, maybe he's, he's sort of just saying what he thinks she needs to hear. But honestly, that's not his modus operandi, like operandi. It's not how he does things. The man doesn't like try to lie to you to get him, get you on his side. He, he just beats you up until you die and then you're on his side. And Lucy, he could just carry or like having handcuffs or whatever. I legitimately think that the man at some level has started to care about Lucy. And I, I would never would have called that, but I think it's amazing. I think it works so well with, again, with the sort of breakdown of his psyche that we've seen going through with her screaming and her like running away and his sort of long journey with him. It's, it it makes a weird kind of emotional sense that he would start to develop this bizarre bond with her and she with him like the, the pseudo parental, but also now she's older and he's still got the protective thing, but like, she's maybe kind of into him because she's older now. And he's like, who knows what's going on with his head. I, I, it just makes me so happy thinking about how weird and crazy this relationship is on so many levels. And, and yet, it, it, it's perfectly Z nation. It feels like the kind of turn that this show when it's working right does so well it, it, to not to, to set this guy up as the boogeyman and, and throughout the season, see him as the boogeyman. And then not in a, like an instantaneous turn of events, but in a very believable way, have him broken down from being the boogeyman and reveal something human inside although still kind of twisted and messed up. I, yeah, I love that. I love that so much. I, before we get to how all that stuff resolves, though, we're following with, you know, Warren and Murphy and 10 K and red and five K. I'm glad red doesn't talk that much. Honestly, I was not a huge fan of her in the, the op- season opening movie. I'm glad she's there for 10 K to sort of have emotional support, but um, maybe they'll recast that actress. I would, I, I, no offense if you're watching, I, I just, I may, you're not right for this role or something, or maybe I'm mean, but 
like it, it she that the girl playing that part did not work for me. But this whole little transitionary period had so much gold in it. First of all, the revelation that Murphy is essentially dead. Uh, who knows exactly what that means? Does is his heart still beating? Is his brain still working? Like, I mean, the zombies still move around and they're technically dead. So how how wh- what Z Nation science criteria are we using to say dead? I can I understand that he flatlined at one point, but are we literally saying his heart has been stopped this whole time? Because that's interesting. That's that's super interesting. We get that we get that revelation, and then the revelation that that is the secret to bringing someone back to life in the same way that he was brought back to life. 10 K's on the verge of dying. They, they come up with this, you know, crazy method. Sunday puts it together and she says, okay, we kill him. You bite him, you inject him. And maybe he turns into what Murphy is. And it didn't, it didn't go on for a super long time. Like there's a version of this I could see. And I told my wife this, like if, you could do the Jon Snow thing with this where you kill him at the end of one season. And, but then like, there's a, maybe a way to bring him back. And I I could see that being a cool way to go, but I totally dug what they actually did do here, giving you just enough time to see him die, to kind of let it sink in. And you're like, is he really dead? He's not really dead. Is he, I, uh, is he, he's not really dead. Is he come on? And, and then you do bring him back. Uh, it, it, it worked really well. And his moments of coming back that line, he's when he looks Murphy in the eye and he says, you're not my savior and Murphy's responsible. Thank God for that. Just like line of the episode in an episode with some pretty great lines. The only minor complaint I have here is that we don't get any 10 K and doc stuff. And I understand that you don't really have time for it in the episode. There's a lot of stuff that I think they didn't like if they'd had like an hour to, to do this, they could have done a little bit more, but they didn't have that. So it would have made meant more to me if we had seen 10 K and doc have a little bit more of a moment and you know, no seeing doc get that news that 10 K has died. And then eventually he comes back and we don't, we don't really get to sort of travel along with doc through that whole journey. But doc is kind of the emotional anchor for 10 K and vice versa. He's the one who loves him more than probably anybody else in the group. And I would have liked to see more done with that. Oh, and I skipped over grandpa getting shot. Come on, come on, Warren. Can't you be cool? Can you not be cool for five seconds and not shoot grandpa? Seriously. That made me mad, but barreling towards the conclusion, everybody gets up onto the roof, except for Addie. Who's I kind of felt like that was a little bit of a uh, writing sort of ploy to put her on the outside of the plot. So we could have other people get in and then she could come out in back at the end. But Addie climbing on the outside, everybody else up on the roof. The man is, you know, holding Lucy hostage. Lucy sees her dad for the first time. And you get so many, so much good stuff. Lucy, obviously excited to see her dad, mad that she, that he wasn't there for her. Murphy shooting the man which did not kill him. But in the moment that she, that he shot the man, I thought for sure, like I could see in my mind, the wedge that that would drive between him and Lucy and Lucy as a character, making this choice of saying no more killing in a show. That's, I mean, it's about zombies. It's all about killing, but she's saying, stop the killing. You guys are killing zombies. You're killing each other. Like cut it out. That's exciting to me. That's, that's very, very interesting from a perspective of going forward, assuming that she survives. Uh, I, I, I very seriously doubt that she's going to get killed. There's a lot of back and forth of, I have Lucy and then, then the man has Warren. And then, you know, 
things being moved around, but eventually we get to the moment where the man shoots, shoots Murphy, shoots him in the gut. And I've had this feeling that they could legit kill off Murphy. There there's on the one hand, it's kind of Murphy's story, right? It's, it's, it's been his, like, he's the one who's had the arc the whole way through, but Lucy now is in the picture in a big way, in a way that we can have her be long-term in the show. Uh, she's not a child anymore. I, from an external perspective, we know that Keith Allen had some budgetary salary issues going into this season. There is definitely a path they can take of killing off Murphy and continuing with Lucy in his in uh, in instead of him, where he's he like she's the the football now that everybody's trying to get. She's the MacGuffin, the the savior of mankind, as it were. And I don't know if that's the direction they're going, but that's something that's been in my head. That's not where it stops though. Murphy shot in the gut bullet passes through clearly with blood on it. What do we see? It hits Warren. It goes in. I'm going to call this one and say, I would be real shocked if this is a death blow, but I think we're looking at a blend Warren now. And th- that if especially if Murphy survives, that's a huge that's that's almost that that's on the same level for me as Murphy and 10K, except different because Murphy hated 10K. Like now Murphy is if he's if both of them live this is someone Murphy respects fears to a certain extent and will fight and probably w- would like to control, but definitely sees as more of an equal than 10 K. And if he's got the blend power over her, that they, again, so I just, I'm drooling. I'm drooling in my mind, not literally, but I'm saying like as a person who thinks about stories and you know, the, the way that things can combine and, and add up that could be so cool. Uh, of course we have our final moments where we sort of, we have a, like a lemming sequence for lack of a better word. Uh, Addy finally gets to the top, you know, Terminator style comes after the man, knocks him off the cliff. There is ocean below. So TV logic says that all of these people can survive. Uh, nobody's been shot in the head and they're jumping into water. So technically nobody has to die, but who knows how that's going to go. Knocks the man off. Lucy seeing this happen, jumps off. And that to me is an interesting choice. Obviously it happens in the spur of the moment. And she may not have had a lot of logical thought, but these are two people who have in their boat, both in their weird ways come to mean a lot to her. Th- these are her two sort of, odd shepherds through the zombie apocalypse. The man obviously was the kidnapper and, and Addie is the, the savior slash trying, trying to get her back from the kidnapper person. And they both mean a lot to Lucy at this point. I, it, it's so, it rings true. I mean, you can, you can't go through and say like a specific logical chain of like, what is she trying to accomplish jumping after them? But it really feels like the kind of thing that she would do. 5K jumping after them. On the other hand, that just feels like 5K being 5K. He's like, oh, people jumping off a cliff. I'm going to jump off a cliff too. Kaka. Kaka, y'all. <laughs> I don't I don't know what 5K. I, he can't be. He can't be in the next season, right? That, that, that wouldn't. I'm not going to say never. I'm not going to say never. It seems somewhat unlikely that we're a little bit cluttered, honestly, at this point in the cast, having all these people together was 
it, it was exciting for this finale, but if if they if they stay together, somebody's gonna die. So some of these people gotta die to sort of streamline the group. Um, and I also forgot to mention, at hovering over everybody, the the aircraft that the man has called is apparently the same UFO type helicopter craft. And I didn't go back and watch season two, whatever the episode was where they went to Roswell. I forget the number, but I believe that the idea here is that this is that same type of uh, craft that we're seeing in the daylight now. So we see that it's a rotor craft and not some kind of weird hovercraft. And it's got a gun that is pointing at somebody or something and about to fire off with that weird rainbow energy. It's in, in a sense, just dropping this off and not giving us any resolution is a little bit of a cop out, but from a logistical standpoint, I understand maybe they don't know who all they can get back next season. Maybe they're not sure exactly how they want to proceed. And this gives them a leeway to do whatever. Cause nobody's a hundred percent dead except for grandpa. Grandpa. Why Warren? Can you not chill? Okay. No, except for grandpa, the best zombie ever. Nobody's definitively dead. Everybody can come back from this. So they get to play around with that a little bit. They have that negotiating power with the actors to say, "Uh, you want more money? Uh, Well, your character died. You got shot in the gut, man. You bleed it out. I get that. And there was enough here that I liked that I will not, I won't fault them for that. In addition to all of the great story beats in this episode, I thought this one was really nicely shot. Uh, it, it's a bit of a grab bag with Z Nation sometimes in the cinematography. I, I feel like they're always trying for something, but sometimes, you know, between budget and the, the directors you can afford, it doesn't always end up looking amazing. But this felt really competently done. There was some great staging of shots, some beautiful lighting. And it all, it all flowed together really well. And the edit is, it it worked. It worked for me in a real great way and set up a really cool season four possibility. We know that they're renewed now. We know that everything's cool and that, you know, we're going to get a season four. I do like to think, and I haven't considered this a lot, but looking at this, there's a possibility that if they had gotten the pl- the plug pulled, they could have sort of wrapped it up in this episode. There's a- other directions they could have gone that they could have had everybody live happily ever after. They didn't do that though. And now we've got to wait until August or September of next year to find out what happens. What's going to happen. Anyway, I believe that that is all I have to say about this episode. Thank you guys. Those of you who've been watching through this season with me so much for checking out these recaps. Uh, if you like these, if you look into our channel, I think that there's some stuff here that you, other stuff that you would like. Uh, we've got the podcast where we talk about movies. If you like me talking about stuff, maybe you'll like me talking about other things besides Z nation. Uh, maybe not, but you give it a shot and see. Also, Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys thought. I try to respond to those. I definitely appreciate all of the conversation we've been able to have throughout this season. You guys are great fans. This is a great show. There's nothing else like it on television. That sounds like hyperbole. It's not the best show on television. Okay, I don't want to go there. But it's always unexpected in some way. And that's, that's crazy for a show about zombies. Zombies are the overdone thing. Some are the thing, the thing that everybody's sick of and to put, to take that and to put such wonderful narrative thoughts into the, into this show, it, it doesn't always succeed, but it's always fearless. And that's what I love. I love that it's, it, it, it's the show that says yes. 
And, you know, hearing some of the, the interviews with the creators and the directors and stuff from the previous episode where at, they blew up the boat. They just were shooting and somebody said, hey, we got a boat. Would you like to blow it up? And they said yes, because you say yes when you're in Z Nation. And it may not always come out to be the most perfect product, but as a person who believes in creating and, and holds that in a very high state, it, it means a lot to me to see a show like this taking this philosophy and running with it of, of, of not being stale, of not doing the same thing everybody else is doing, of grabbing the opportunity that they have with the budget that they have and making the best thing that they can out of it. It's, it's, it's inspiring for me more so than the characters specifically or any, anything in like about the show itself, just the idea that this show exists and that these people work on it and do such a great job putting it all together. It makes me happy and I'll be back. Lord willing in the Creek don't rise for more Z nation recaps next year because this show is my jam y'all until next year, 2017, you guys for the Z nation recap. I'm Albert signing out.